Welcome to the Academic Integrity and Avoiding Plagiarism webinar recording. This topic will be useful for ACAP, NCPS and HSA students. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You may want to just watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and do the activities. The webinar slides are available at this link. The goals of this video are to help you understand what academic integrity and plagiarism mean, learn strategies for avoiding plagiarism including paraphrasing and referencing, and see what good note taking, paraphrasing and referencing look like. First, let's explore what academic integrity means exactly. Academic integrity means honest and responsible scholarship, particularly in relation to assessment tasks. Maintaining your academic integrity involves creating and expressing your own ideas, acknowledging all sources of information, completing assignments independently or acknowledging collaboration, accurately reporting results when conducting your own research, and honesty during examinations. Academic dishonesty not only cheats the student of valuable learning experiences, but can result in a failing grade on assignments, a failing grade at a unit or course, or even expulsion from the college. There are a number of ways in which students may breach academic integrity and one of the most common is plagiarism. Plagiarism means presenting the words or ideas of another person as one's own without appropriate acknowledgement. This may include too closely paraphrasing sentences, paragraphs or ideas, copying the work of others without acknowledgement, submitting your own previously submitted or assessed work without permission, and submitting work which has been produced by someone else and claiming authorship for it. Plagiarism may be intentional or unintentional. However, students are held to the same standards whether or not they knew they were plagiarising or whether they were plagiarising themselves or someone else. So what can students do to avoid plagiarism in their work? There are five important skills and conventions to learn and use to avoid plagiarising the work of others. These are, take good notes, paraphrase and summarise well, reference accurately, keep direct quotes to a minimum, and use Turnitin to your advantage. We'll go through each of these in turn now. The first strategy is to take good notes. The best way to do this is to read the material carefully, then put the text aside, take some time to think about what you've read, and then write down the main ideas in your own words. Once you've done that, you can use your notes to create a first draft. When taking notes, avoid copying straight from a source unless you intend to quote that source directly. If you write directly from a source into a draft, it can increase the chance you will unintentionally plagiarise. During the note-taking stage, make sure you record information about the source and keep a copy of it so that you can reference it properly later on. Here's an example of good note-taking. The student has taken notes in point form and reworded the ideas in their own words. They have also noted down the details of the source, which will be helpful when the time comes to reference the source. The second strategy to avoid plagiarism in your work is to paraphrase and summarise well. Paraphrasing is when you express ideas and information from your sources in your own way using your own words. To paraphrase, use a combination of the following. Use synonyms, which means similar words, or antonyms, which means opposite words. Vary the sentence structure, change the order of information, change long sentences into short ones and combine short ones into long ones, change abstract ideas into concrete ones, and highlight the view of the author using reporting verbs like states and claims. After paraphrasing a sentence or section, it's a good idea to compare your paraphrase with the original text. You should have covered the main ideas, but not explain them in the same words. Here's an example of a passage that has been paraphrased. How are these two passages the same? How are they different? What information has the student added to their paraphrase to show that it comes from a source? Pause the video now, if you like, and think about these questions. Let's take a closer look at how this has been paraphrased. As you can see, in sentence 1, the order of information has been changed. The second part of the sentence has been brought to the front in the paraphrase. 
Some of the language has also been changed. For example, not easy has been changed to difficult. Some of the language has also been changed in sentence two. For example, many people still hold the view that has been changed to it is commonly thought that. And the last section in orange has been extended and elaborated on slightly while keeping the meaning the same. Take a look at the sentence on the slide and have a go at paraphrasing it. You can pause the video now if you like. Here's one possible way this sentence could be paraphrased. Notice that some of the words have been changed, the sentence structure has been rearranged, and a reference to the source has been added. Let's now clarify a few commonly asked questions. If you follow the original sentence structure while replacing occasional words with synonyms, are you paraphrasing? The answer is no. Just changing a few words here or there or rearranging words or sentences is not paraphrasing. This is plagiarism. Although you are borrowing ideas, it is essential that your writing is as original as possible. Here's another question for you. Do you need a reference if you paraphrase? The answer is yes. Even though you are not borrowing any language, you'll still need to cite the source to indicate that you are borrowing ideas. This leads us to the next strategy for avoiding plagiarism, referencing accurately. In any assignment, you must give credit to the sources for the ideas you are using. Any time you summarise, paraphrase or give a direct quote, you must reference the source in text and also provide a full reference in your reference list. This allows readers to refer back to the sources for themselves. You must give a reference whenever you draw on a source of information as a source of a particular theory, argument or viewpoint, for specific information such as statistics, examples or case studies, for information that you have paraphrased and for direct quotes. Let's now have a look at different ways you can incorporate a reference in a sentence. You could add the reference to the start of the sentence by using the author's surname and a word like states, claims or argues. You could also use the phrase according to. The other way to incorporate a reference is to add it to the end of the sentence. You could even add a small phrase at the start of the sentence like research indicates that. Notice that when the reference is at the end of the sentence like this, both the author and year are within the parentheses and the full stop goes after the reference. Also note that there are different styles of referencing. The style shown here is APA, which is used at ACAP and HSA, but NCPS students please note that a different style is used, which has some slight differences, so check your style guide. Now have a go at referencing the sentence in italics on the slide. The sentence has already been paraphrased. You just need to add in the reference at either the start or end of the sentence. You can pause the video now if you like. Here are two ways you could reference this sentence. The fourth strategy for avoiding plagiarism in your work is to keep direct quotes to a minimum. A direct quote means to use the author's exact words. Direct quotes are usually appropriate when you want to give a precise definition of something or when the author has expressed something in a unique and powerful way. However, an assignment should be written in your own words as much as possible. If you submit an assignment that contains many direct quotes, it makes it hard for the marker to see your understanding of the material. Therefore, it is better to paraphrase when you can. If you do want to include a direct quote, make sure it is formatted correctly so that the reader can clearly see it is a quotation and not your own words. In APA style, this means putting the quote in double quotation marks and including the page number, as shown in the example on the screen. Also note that in the example, the direct quote has been introduced with a lead-in phrase so that it is incorporated smoothly within a sentence rather than just standing alone. Now it's your turn to have a go at incorporating a direct quote into a sentence. You can pause the video now if you like. Here are two ways the quote could be incorporated in a sentence. Notice that in each example, the quote is introduced with a lead-in phrase and does not just stand on its own. The fifth strategy for avoiding plagiarism in your work is to use Turnitin to your advantage. 
Turnitin is a software that compares student assignments with other sources including the internet, electronic journals, books and other student assignments. You are able to submit a draft assignment to Turnitin which will produce a report where you can see which parts of your assignment have come up as a match to other sources. This doesn't necessarily mean that those parts of the text have been plagiarised. For example, it will highlight any direct quotes that you have used, but if they are referenced correctly, then the match may be acceptable. However, if you see that you have used many direct quotes, then you may want to consider paraphrasing some of them. The report will also indicate any areas that you have paraphrased but are still quite close to the original text and therefore need better paraphrasing. You are able to use Turnitin to receive your originality report and are then able to review and rework the assignment prior to final submission. Therefore, Turnitin should be seen as a formative and educative tool. Student Learning Support run a webinar and have a video resource on how to interpret your Turnitin report, so be sure to check them out. Let's now take a look at a section of an assignment where a student has used all these strategies to create a text that has academic integrity and is free from plagiarism. You can pause the video now if you like to read through the text, then we'll go through and look at the different strategies that have been used. First, you would have noticed that the student has incorporated the information that we looked at earlier in the video and it has been paraphrased well. The paraphrased information has also been referenced to show where the information comes from. The student has also added in a sentence using their own words to show the link between sources. Not only does this help improve the flow of the text, but it also shows the reader that the student has an understanding of the relationship between the ideas in different texts. In the next section, the student has summarised a study in their own words and included only the most relevant information. The student has incorporated a short direct quote in the paragraph and put it within quotation marks to show that it is the author's exact words. The student has wrapped up the paragraph by providing their own comment and interpretation of the issues discussed, which ensures that the paragraph is not just a description or a summary of other people's work. The student has also ensured that the sources that are mentioned in text are referenced in full in the reference list. By combining all of these strategies, the student has produced an essay that has academic integrity and is free from plagiarism and is therefore much more likely to receive a good mark. This checklist may come in handy for reviewing your own assignments. Before submitting your assignment, make sure you have paraphrased well and included references where needed, used direct quotes sparingly, provided references for images, figures and tables taken from a source, and included a reference list. Also make sure you keep a copy of all the sources you have used. It's also important to ensure you have not copied and pasted information, even if it is accidental. You must also not have used another student's work. There are severe penalties for this. Also check that you have not used work from one of your previous assignments. All work must be original. For more information on assessment policies, check out the information on your college's website. Also be sure to check out the other webinars we offer that relate to academic integrity. As mentioned, Student Learning Support offer a webinar on interpreting your Turnitin report, as well as other webinars on paraphrasing and referencing. You can register for webinars via the SLS website. Feel free to contact Student Learning Support via phone or email if you have any questions or if you would like to request an individual consultation with an advisor. Good luck with your studies this term.